Good morning from a kind of overcast day. It's Sheffield Beach. Um, I haven't made a video for quite a while, but I wanted to start sharing stuff, some things that um, the Lord's put on my heart just to encourage you. You know, I feel in this time, you know, we've been through COVID. We've had some tough times, and I think um, it's a time to start encouraging each other once again. Um, so we've recently made a move to the Belita area in KZN, um, leaving Hillcrest and uh, stepping down from ministry um, at Hillside and um, work in Africa. And we seeking the Lord for fellowship here and outreach here. Uh, we see a lot of young families in this area. You know, it's a beach surfing town and um, I just love surfing and fishing and um, kayaking. So it's time to, for me to get into that stuff, but to start uh, evangelizing on the sidewalks down here, on the beach sidewalks and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and His grace. But today I wanted to share um, an encouragement because of what's going on in the world. And we know in Hebrews 12, the Lord has said, you know, that everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. And I think, man, oh man, we've seen that over the past uh, few years, that so many things are being shaken, so many things that we thought were solid, so many institutions, so many financial uh, uh, um, systems, uh, health systems, we just found that they've been shaken. And the things that we thought were solid and that we could rely on, um, just are not there anymore or are not reliable anymore. So today I wanted to just say, don't forget we have a kingdom and we serve in a kingdom and we serve in a king that cannot be shaken. That is a rock and we build our lives on that rock as Jesus Christ, on the finished work of the cross and the new covenant. And one of the um, famous pictures of grace and prophetic um, pictures of grace that I want to talk about today is Psalm 23, because it is one of the most amazing Psalms. And, you know, what we need to realize is that all these promises that we read in the scriptures and we read in the Psalms, in the old, in the, which was the Old Covenant, yet David had an understanding of the grace of God and the goodness of God. And um, this is very strongly expressed in Psalm 23. Psalm 23, you know, I led, I led my father to to the Lord, basically on his deathbed, by singing Psalm 23 over him. Um, I think he was 87 years of age, and uh, praise God, gave his life when he was reminded of the promises of Psalm 23. And we know that it's one of the most well-known psalms. But the interesting thing about Psalm 23 is that we are called to feast with the Lord in the presence of of our enemies in the presence of disaster. That's when we feast with the Lord. So I just want to say to you today, God is good. God is on our side and he wants us to feast with him. He wants us to be extravagantly dependent on his goodness and his grace. And I want to look at this uh, Psalm 23. And, and you probably all know it off by heart, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Now, we remember in John chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. So, again, this is a prophetic picture of Jesus Christ. This is a prophetic picture of the new covenant, the grace of God, and the power of God for us, new covenant believers. So, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Guys, hear what it says. I lack nothing. So, we need to be living in, expecting, in an expectation that we shall not live in lack. And I know people like, oh yeah, but this is just a, a, a prosperity gospel and they get kind of upset. But let me just say something. Jesus came and he said, I have come that you may have abundant life. The thief comes to rob, kill and destroy. You see, Jesus, you can't have abundant life if you're bound in poverty, sickness, oppression. We, we need to live in a life where we lack nothing. And, I, and, I, and I, it's not just material possessions, but it's we lack nothing. Psychologically, our, 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 our souls are made whole. We lack nothing in the physical realm. And we need to live in that expectation because that is what Jesus earned for us on the cross. The exchange of the cross means that we should not live in lack. And if we are, 
then we need to like break out of that, knowing that it's the thief that comes to rob. So the Lord is my shepherd. I trust in Jesus as the good, good shepherd, as the good, good and loving father. The Holy Spirit is the good helper. And that I'm not going to be in lack. And I want that for you as well. If you're in lack, get down on your knees, pray out the promises of God and expect that lack to be overcome in Christ. It's good news. It works. Guys, I've got so many testimonies in my life of that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to share some, some of, start sharing some of those again. So the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. This is a place of tranquility. When we're in the Lord, we should be in a place of abundance. Green pastures represents abundance for the sheep. Still waters, a calmness about our lives. As Paul says in Philippians 4, I've learned to be content in each and every situation, whether well figured or hungry or in plenty or in want. See, there needs to be this contentment that God is on the throne and God is in control and that he wants to put us in a favorable place. He's not angry with us. He's not punishing us. The punishment was taken and that wrath was taken on the cross for believers, for those who believe. So he wants us to be in a place like sheep in a green pasture, <laughs> a lovely place, a place where we lie down, we, we drink clear waters of the Holy Spirit. He refreshes our souls. He wants, us to, he wants it to go well with us. He wants our souls, that's body, mind, and spirit, or, or sorry, mind and, and our, our thoughts to be at peace. That inner, that inner man, it may, may it go well, may we be sanctified, body, soul, and spirit. Your soul is your mind, your thinking, your personality. He wants to refresh us. And we do that by coming to him every day and feeding on Jesus. Jesus said, you know, I am the bread of life. I feed on me. Drink of the living waters of the Holy Spirit. It's a, it's a daily discipline to be intimate with God. So he wants to refresh your soul. If your soul is not refreshed, ask the Holy Spirit. Understand that is your destiny to be refreshed. It's not something God does now and again. He says he refreshes our soul. And he guides me, guides me along paths of righteousness. You see, we are righteous by faith in Jesus Christ, not because of the works we do. You know, this is a, a, a strong theme Actually, the, the, the major theme of the cross. He, Jesus Christ, became sin that we should become the righteousness of God in Christ. So he leads us along paths of righteousness. How do we live in a right way? How do, we, how do we work out the power of the gospel in us, the power of the Holy Spirit in us, the promises of God in a right way? So I live with an expectation every day, hearing from the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So I read, as I read the Bible, I read the promises, I see what righteous living looks like. I'm able to, to put aside immorality, to put aside greed, to put aside to sin. I can, I can live in righteousness because I'm no longer a sinner, but I am a righteous man. Not because of my works, not because of my merit, but because of the merits of the cross. You are the same. If you're a believer, that the Holy Spirit, who's our guide and our counselor, will, and, and the word of God, who is Jesus, will guide us in how to do things in the right way, how to live in the right way, because that's what brings about blessing and prosperity. From the fullness of his grace, John 1.16, we receive blessing upon blessing, grace upon grace and favor upon favor, because he shows us how to walk in right ways that we can be blessed, that he can bless. He wants to bless us. He's a good father. For his name's sake, you see, he does it. It sounds crazy, but he does it not for our sake, for his sake, because he wants people to look at us and say, wow, who is the God? Who is this God they serve? And give glory to God. That's, that's, what, that's what our lives are about, giving glory to, your life, to God. And if your life's a mess, know that God wants to take you out of that mess, lift you out of the muck and mire. Bring you into a favorable place, a green pasture, besides the waters. Restore the, the or, or heal the hurt. Restore your soul so that you can get up again and fight again and get on again and prosper again. 
And listen to this. It says, even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You see, it's, it's interesting that actually, and we've seen this with this, with this whole COVID thing, um, with, with so many things that have been going on in the world, that there's always this kind of sense of death lurking around. You know, it's apathy. It says, it says in Romans 8, it says, for, for the whole of creation is longing, is in decay, and it's longing for the sons of God to be revealed. You see, death and atrophy, decay, is part of the sin, effects of sin in the world. So the, the world is, is decaying. And there's, and there's darkness around. People are, there's so many people in darkness. It, it's unbelievable what we see going on in some of this, uh, uh, you know, gender stuff and, and uh, sexual stuff and, and greed. It's darkness, darkness going on in the world. And people can't recognize it because they're blinded by the darkness. But even though we walk in this valley of where there's the shadow of death and there's darkness and, and uh, we don't need to fear evil because Jesus overcame the devil. So the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy, the, to destroy sin, the power of sin. Because God is with us. You know, God's not distance. He's with us. I will fear no evil for you are with me. <laughs> Such good news. God lives in us. He's with us. And we don't need to fear evil. Evil needs to fear us. We are overcomers. We have a power and authority, as it says in Luke chapter 10. Jesus said, you know, go into the world and, and, and um, preach the good news and cast out demons. I see Satan falling like lightning from heaven. Satan needs to be on the run from you and from me. We are mighty sons and daughters of God. We have the Holy Ghost living in us, the power of God working through us. <laughs> Don't let evil overcome us. We will not let evil over. We'll take our stands against the scheme of the devil. I'm not going to fear evil, even though there's death all around. Guess what? We are children of light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. When I walk into a place and I know there's darkness, let me tell you, the light shines out of me and demons flee. And you need to know the same for you. We are the children. We can go in the, by the way, the, the valley, in the valley sometimes, you know, I love going and hiking in the mountains in the Drakensberg here in South Africa. Some of the most beautiful places are in the valleys. The, the, the still waters and the green pastures are in the valleys. The valley of the shadow of death can be the most beautiful place where we sit and feast before the Lord. I'm going to stop there. Um, I don't want to go on too long, but I want to, uh, I'm, I'm going to share next time the rest about the rest of the psalm about feasting at the Lord's table. But guys, if you're going through a hard time, if your faith has been shaken, let's get back to the goodness of God. So I just want to pray right now over us. I pray for myself. I need the, I need the help of God daily. Daily, I am dependent. I'm not an independent person. I am a person dependent on God. God lets me go. I'm lost. My faith is not in myself and my ability my faith is in Him and His ability and His Spirit working in me. And I, so now I just, I just want to pray, Holy Spirit, I pray for each person that, that listens to this video. Today we will overcome. Today is the day of a new beginning. You are the God of today and I thank you that today we have everything we need to be overcomers, to overcome anything that's come against us, any scheme of the devil. Anywhere where we've been robbing Satan, I remind you, according to the word of God in Proverbs, it says that the thief is caught, he will restore sevenfold. And I command a restoration over every person from which things have been stolen during this, these last few years. I command that you, devil, restore sevenfold. And I thank you, God, that that is a promise in your word. And we live by every promise being yes and amen in Christ. Bless you, brothers and sisters.